Hello guys. So from the past 1.5 years, generative AI is making a lot of buzz in the data analytics industry. You'll be seeing a lot of LLM models that are coming from big, big tech giants like Google, Meta, OpenAI, Microsoft, uh, Anthropic, you know, Cloudy3 models. And every day, some or the other LLM models are specifically coming, multi-models are coming, and over there, the comparison of accuracy is basically done. The kind of use cases that we can probably create from these LLM models are extensive, related to text generation, image generation. Uh, if I talk with respect to in various domains, right, let it be finance, let it be retail sales, in each and every domain, you can use this kind of multi-models or LLM models to create amazing chatbots which will be able to answer anybody's question, let's say with respect to their orders, with respect to the kind of concerns they have. And this is really helping the company to probably automate the entire support process, right? Uh, but still the question that comes in our mind, right? When is generative AI more effective and when it is not effective? And in this video, I'm going to discuss about that. Recently, first of all, I'll share you some information. Recently, Gartner have published this amazing article. We'll go through that particular article. And uh, later on, I'll be putting a lot of points to make you understand when generative AI is effective or not effective. Should we learn generative AI? Um, you know, and we'll also be talking about machine learning, deep learning, what are the traditional techniques that are already available, what all we can specifically do, and what is the process of learning all these technologies that also we'll be specifically discussing. Now let me quickly go ahead and share my screen over here. So here you can see uh, this was the post that was made from Gartner. Over here the question is very simple. When generative AI, so here you can see, I will just close this. When generative AI is and is not effective, okay? And here they are done some use case family, right? So they have created some use case family like prediction or forecasting. Then there is something like decision intelligence. I will be providing you this link in the description of this particular video. Then you have something called a segmentation or classification. Then you have recommendation system. And then final two things that you have is something called as content generation and conversational user interfaces. Now, if I talk with respect to generative models, if I see use cases like prediction, forecasting, decision intelligence, segmentation or classification, recommendation system, the value is from between low to medium, you know? So low basically means it, it is hardly, it cannot be, I'll say, if you really want to get a accurate prediction of forecasting model, definitely cannot use generative AI models. That will definitely not be uh, suitable. Then you have decision intelligence, that also will not be suitable. For segmentation and classification, you can use it, but it will be of a medium rare use cases. Uh, because the kind of accuracy that you may be getting with respect to other data where we use machine learning and deep learning techniques, more efficient models will be able to create. Then you have recommendation systems here also, I think you'll not be able to get that much high accuracy. But if you see with respect to these two things, that is content generation, conversational user interfaces. This is amazing over here. Uh, task like text generation, image, video generation, synthetic data, virtual assistant, chatbot, digital worker, everything you'll be able to do this specific use case, okay? Uh, if you see with respect to example use cases like risk prediction, customer churn, prediction, sales, demand forecasting, decision support, augmentation, automation, clustering, customer object, uh, customer segmentation, object classification, recommendation engine, personalized advice, next best action. So all these things are there where low to medium is the kind of use, uh, use cases you'll be able to get for the generative AI models. Now I hope from this you will be able to understand the main two strong strength of generative AI. Uh, is available in content generation and conversation user interface. And the reason is very much simple. As we say, generative AI, it is specifically used to generate new things, okay? And these all are like LLM models, multi-models. They are trained with huge amount of data. And in internet, you have huge amount of data. OpenAI, Google, everybody is probably in that specific race, you know? Now, let's take one more very important article over here, okay? So here, uh, uh, this is the article. Again, I'll be sharing you the link when not to use generative AI. So let's talk about this three important points, okay? Three thing, things to tell your peers. The hype surrounding generative AI can lead to use of technology where it is not a good fit. See, if the hype is keep on increasing, you know, everybody will talk about generative AI. You know, I've seen sometimes people, hey, is in your company, are you using generative AI? But why do we use it? You know, is there a specific use case over there, right? 
just for an unnecessary use case should i use generative ai models should i use llm models should i use multi models and should i just try to use it it is not a good fit right so it is increasing the risk of higher complexity and failure of projects so obviously if you're not able to get a good accuracy with respect to the kind of use cases that you have developed then this is going to happen and i've seen in my entire years of experience that i've worked in different different service based and product based companies a lot of failure of projects has actually happened over focusing on generative ai can lead to ignoring the broad set of alternatives and more established ai techniques which are far more better fit for the majority of the potential ai use case right now guys if i go back 5 year 5 years back where machine learning was extensively used traditional machine learning algorithms were used deep learning basic use cases were used right right now they are far more established ai algorithms that have already come in the market right and if we keep our mindset just focused on generative ai and say hey i want to probably execute each and every use case with the help of generative ai then that is not going to work because we are missing out that important techniques that has been already developed in the market to solve that particular use case that can actually give up that can actually give us a big result out there right so this is the second important concern that you can see over here third thing is that strive to combine ai techniques to create more robust system in which varying techniques can mitigate other weakness see i if i have a use case if i see that generative ai is somewhere useful right then i may use along with some ai techniques and i may try to solve that particular use case okay now just by reading this particular post again i'll be sharing this entire post in the description of this particular video because many people still have the concern krish generative ai is probably gaining popularity should i run machine learning should i learn deep learning should i learn nlp right now guys let me tell you okay 5 years back every companies uh, they started focusing on machine learning because there was a buzz regarding machine learning and deep learning so most of the use cases they were trying to see they had huge amount of data they want to utilize that particular data they created the ai team and they started working on that at the end of the day why companies are specifically moving towards that particular step because machine learning was gaining that particular uh, momentum throughout the world and obviously they want to provide a very good experience to the end user and when they could provide a very good experience to the end user you will be able to see that they will be able to charge that specific users right i will give you a use case in one of the product based companies where i was working with uh, uh ac appliances refrigerators where i had to do a lot of coding there we created some amazing ai models at the end of the day we created some recommendation system just by using machine learning and deep learning techniques and later on we were able to create an amazing experience to the end user who was specifically using that getting that entire ai data in their phone how they are using this appliances and many more things and they were paying for that so that way they were able to generate the revenue right but and at that point of time let's say if companies are using this that basically means they are in the right set of market because they are working in the trending technologies and because of that more name and fame the companies will be able to gain right when you talk about apple iphones when you talk about samsung phones s4 s3 right all these phones has recent techniques of ai techniques that is integrated in that right so through this there will be a buzz about that particular company throughout the world now let's come to the next thing right right now generative ai is taking that entire place like it is it is right now in the talk of the town right everybody who probably wants to work in the generative ai field let's say i have seen some people who do not have the basic knowledge of machine learning and nlp and they still want to work in the generative ai technology that is not i'm not saying that it is wrong you can go ahead and work it right but always understand one thing is that you really need to have your base strong the reason is very much simple right now generative ai in buzz right in probably some years everybody will be able to create chatbots right but still there are a lot of majority of business use cases that are still solved with traditional machine learning and deep learning algorithms where ml ops is used to make sure that it creates uh, it, it will be created as an end to end project right so that entire life cycle of a machine learning project or deep learning project where we are using ml ops along with github action let's say some of the tools that i'm actually talking about that is still being used for majority of the use cases here generative ai is in buzz because right now we have amazing llm models and because of that many companies can create the exceptional chatbots conversational uis and they can probably deploy that particular thing to provide an amazing experience to the end user right but after some years this will become stagnant right tomorrow <coughs> if i say if i think of creating a consulting company right now i know various techniques in generative ai i know how to create an end to end chatbot projects i know how to work with vector databases and you can probably see from most of my videos that has been created right 
if i probably create a consulting company i may get many clients and i'm getting i'm i'm, I'm getting a lot of requests from many many companies hey please try to create this kind of chatbot for us we have this specific data you have to probably create an end to end gen ai project itself for that right and probably integrate with their web application right so today if i probably go ahead and open a consulting company where i will be able to get the clients and all right and tomorrow let's say after couple of years you know that this will going to get stagnant because everybody will be able to create this everybody will be focusing on creating content generation and text generation and all and they will be able to solve their uh, entire uh, you know probably they will be able to create the products and right now if we are uh, you will also be seeing in the funding sector guys in funding sectors also when we see people or vcs who are funding right they also want to see this buzz buzzwords whether they are integrating if i say hey i'm trying to develop a product with the help of gen ai right it looks super cool and obviously when we try to explain it they think okay yeah we will be able to capture this particular market this much, this much market this is the problem statement that it is trying to solve that is perfectly fine but if i talk with respect to people who are learning generative ai tomorrow let's say once your work gets less in generative ai they will tell you to probably work in machine learning or deep learning projects at that point of time what you will do okay so it is necessary that when you work as a data scientist when you work as an ai engineer it is always good to have knowledge from every sector you have to learn machine learning you have to probably learn deep learning you have to go ahead and learn about generative ai i'm not saying that you don't have to learn generative ai you have to because right now in market that is the trend if you probably see the market right now yes everybody is working over there many clients have that requirements many companies are hiring this so you will also be able to make that specific hike but i'm not just saying that hey just go and focus on generative ai always make sure that your basic foundation should also be good because tomorrow once you get hired by a company you cannot just say that hey i will only work in generative ai use cases there will be different use cases on machine learning deep learning everything you have to probably work so it is a sincere request always try to find out what kind of use cases that you really want to solve and uh, there are two important points that i'll make out of this particular video is that focus on each and every section and as you see right as we go ahead ai will keep on evolving new techniques new skill sets will also be coming up right and the second thing is that uh, i've heard from many people hey i want to probably use generative ai for this use case use case please try to identify the use case and just see whether you'll be able to solve with the basic machine learning techniques deep learning techniques and all uh, yes with respect to text generation and all you can actually do it and the third thing is that as the market is evolving also make sure that whatever new things are probably coming up keep a hold on that you'll get lot of opportunities as you go ahead that is the reason what i do is that i make sure that i keep on uploading videos re related to recent things that are coming up in the market and th through this many people are able to get hired because those kind of jobs are basically getting created and you can actually go ahead and see my linkedin post there are lot of job opportunities that are which people have actually cracked i've shared those kind of transition stories with amazing hikes right So yes uh, this was it for my side uh, regarding this particular video I'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one all take care bye